Hello and welcome back to Highway to Hoover, a production of SEC Extra over at D1Baseball.com. I'm your host, Joe Healy, joined as always by my good friend and co-host, Mark Etheridge. We're here to recap week nine around SEC Baseball. Another uh, informative week, I, I guess. That's a, There's a question mark at the end of that because it yeah. seems like every week we, we get a new set of answers, but then a new set of questions. But I guess that's what makes this job fun. Uh, We will get into all of week nine's action here in just a second. But first, I have to let you know that this episode of Highway to Hoover and every episode of Highway to Hoover is brought to you by PitchLogic, the system used by players, coaches, scouts, and instructors at all levels of play from youth leagues to the big leagues. The easy to use and affordable technology makes the platform accessible to every player at every level. All the metrics and features used at the highest level. See PitchLogic.com for more information. All right, Mark, you and I had both had a, a couch weekend, um, yeah. which, you know, those are nice to, to mix in because you can pay closer attention to a lot Everything. more than you otherwise <laughs> could. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, being at a game, even if you're, you know, you go back to a hotel and watch some night games or, or whatever, you're just not as locked in on other stuff as you are when you're on the road. So it was kind of nice to have a couch weekend where I was, bouncing around from game to game. I feel like I have a, a little, I'm not having to do as much catch up on Sunday, I guess is the, the best way to put it. So um, I feel like there's no better place to start Mark than, than the number one team going down. Alabama yeah. wins that series against Arkansas. Um, and it felt like for Alabama, this was a series that for lack of a better way of putting it, got them back on course, right? Mm-hmm. Because it, it, we started to start, we started to ask questions about Alabama again, like, ah, you know, Ben Hess just hasn't been right. The yeah. offense is backsliding a little bit. Uh, you know, how good could Zane Adams really be? He's a freshman, right? Sure. Um, and, and those are fair questions, but then they come back and and do this, right, against a team that right. had been cruising. So, um, and then obviously the, 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 the story for me is, you know, okay, you split the first two games, that's good, but then you come out today and you're, you're in a little bit of a disadvantage on paper. It's Brady Tigert with some bullpen options available for Arkansas against Zane Adams. Again, a guy who last time out didn't pitch all that well and is a, is a younger guy and does just doesn't have the experience. How's that going to go? Well, the answer was incredible. <laughs> like Zane Adams was the story of, of that game and, and pitches them through it to win that series. And if we're looking at the end of the year and Bama is a, is a postseason team um, or heck, if they even get into the, the conversation to, to host again, whatever it is, we're going to look back, I think, on this weekend as, I don't want to say a turning point because they've had other good weekends, but that's a centerpiece of a postseason resume, what we just saw this weekend. Yeah. I mean, it looks like they are really tough at home. I mean, they had the series win over Tennessee. They had the series win over South Carolina. Now they have a series win over the number one team in the nation, Arkansas. And, you know, look who comes next weekend, probably the new number one team in the nation, Texas a and um, but but I do think that the way that they battled against Hagen Smith, I mean, he's so much better than anyone else you're going to face. Um, I, I saw the quote from from Rod Va- Rob Vaughn after the game, and he was he was really upbeat despite the loss because of how they how they the bats that they had, and that kind of gave you if you're an Alabama guy, kind of some hope that they would be able to handle against a mortal pitcher, right, which they would see the rest of the weekend. And they did. And they were able to win kind of a, a weird game on Saturday where, you know, it's it was solo home runs for both sides. And then Arkansas pitcher made an, made an error in, in the tenth and allowed Alabama to score, right? And that even the series, and you're thinking, well, they kind of stole one there. Um, Arkansas, you know, resort to form on Sunday, but no, Zane Adams, as you mentioned, I mean, he's the freshman, freshman of the week because he, he threw eight shutout innings, probably could have finished it that they went to Alton Davis in the ninth. And, and he was, you know, he was himself, which, which they've been hoping to get. And in Alabama, I mean, they won five to nothing. It wasn't like a one, nothing game that they scored enough runs. And this was what they needed they needed to come out and play well, win a series against a team that, you know, most of us felt they would lose to and, and be able to assert themselves. Cause you know, that's the difference 
you know, when you look at, at Auburn, you look at LSU, you look at some of the teams that are, that are lower in the standings, they're not winning those games against the top of the conference. And for Alabama to, to at least get a win, you know, and get a series win on top of that kind of kind of elevates them just a little bit higher than some of these other teams, that, you know, in the pecking order. And, and I think, you know, that gives you hope if you're an, an Alabama guy that the things are going to continue – continue to progress and they're able to, you know, get back in this mix. Cause you know, it's, it's tough. I mean, th- th- it's a gauntlet every week. We, we look at some of these schedules teams are playing and it's just brutal week after week after week. And Alabama's no, no stranger to that as well. And if, if they could, you know, if they could find a way to, to take the A&M series next week, A&M hasn't lost, I mean, they lost the Florida series, but they haven't lost anything since. Um, I mean, the A&M, to me, is playing the best in the country. Um, they are the best team in the country. If Alabama finds a way to win that, then all of a sudden we look at them a little bit differently. And and after beating Arkansas, um, you, you certainly think that that's within their grasp, right? It's not some, you know, some uh, far-fetched scenario that we're discussing. Yeah, I, I yeah, first of all, before I move on to anything else, you reminded me of the Jake Faraday error in the in the middle game of the series. And and I don't say this to 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 like give the kid a hard time, like I, but I truly mean this when I say it when I've never been more sure that an error was coming than when I saw mm-hmm. him cock to throw the ball. Because yeah. it like he bobbled it and then he like couldn't pick it up quite right and then he went to throw it and it just looked so unorthodox right. and so not confident. I was like, oh lord, this ball's going up the line, and sure <laughs> enough, um, <laughs> and you just hate that because like pitchers, right. it's kind of a crapshoot when they're throwing to the bases and especially when they get rushed, and so you just kind of saw that coming. Um, yeah, you hate for a close game to be decided on a play like that for right? sure, for sure, right. yeah. Um, one thing I found impressive about Alabama too was that they solved Will McIntyre a little bit, mm-hmm. and and maybe it's you know McIntyre's done a lot of innings, so maybe it's maybe it's a combination of you know he's hitting a little bit of a wall, or maybe it was good just good tape, or maybe you know whatever mm-hmm. it was. Alabama did something nobody's really done this season, and they they got him twice. Mm-hmm. They but you know both times he came in that they, they got him, so it's one one thing to do it once, it's another to do it twice, which does lead me to believe that it's just they had good tape and a good approach on the guy that they were able to able to do it twice uh, real quick on the Arkansas side, Mark. Um, obviously, well, I don't want to say obviously it was likely they were going to lose a series at some point and it was probably yeah. going to be on the road. Everybody will. Right. Right. Yeah. The time is coming for you too, Kentucky. You're right. Don't, don't, don't you worry. <laughs> like <laughs> there is a series that will probably get lost just because that's, that's sec baseball, especially on the road. But, um, I have had people ask me all season about the offense and and I get it. Like I'm not hand waving it away. Um, They're just not explosive and you can get got in a series when uh, the other team just is able to give up one or two runs or three runs instead of six or seven, because Arkansas has won a lot of games scoring five, six, seven runs this year Mm -hmm. in the big picture though. I'm, I'm really not all that worried about it to be honest with you just because I think we have enough proof of concept with this Arkansas team that they, they, they won a ton of games playing with this kind of offense. It wasn't great this weekend. I get it, but I, I just don't think this is going to be like a switch flip and all of a sudden they're going to just be super duper vulnerable. No, Um, you know, we'll, we'll see. That's, that's my hunch. I I don't either. I, I mean, I think, you know, when you play the way they do, which is timely hitting, uh, great pitching. You, you know, your margin for error is a little slimmer than somebody who just bludgeons people to death. And, and I do think that that's going to cause them to lose some games. And and that happened this weekend. I don't think it's going to happen very often. But I, I do think that you know Arkansas, compared to say A and M, who's scoring ten runs a game. Um, may lose a few more in the in the course of the regular season, but when you match them up together, uh, it's going to be fascinating to see because Arkansas has just got so much pitching and and in their offense, although it wasn't good today against St. Adams, it's been pretty good for the you know for the whole year. 
and uh, I'm not I'm not concerned about them at all. I, I st they are still my pick to win it all. And um, although A&M sort of give me some, some maybe some second guessing there, they're playing really well. I, I do think that uh, that that you know Arkansas with, with they've just got so many options in the bullpen, and you don't even know who's going to pitch each day because they've, they've got so many. Uh, it's it's just one of those teams that's destined to make it to Omaha. Yeah, feel, feels that way. The way I phrased it this season is that most everybody can hit, especially in the SEC. There are some exceptions, but most everybody can really hit. But having an elite pitching staff just is a separator in 2024. Uh, just because you see these high scores all over the place. It's, you know, but being able to, to pitch the way they do is something that not everyone can do. And so that, that to me is, is, is a separator for them. Let's um, move on to the, uh, the egg bowl series, if you will, mm -hmm. Ole Miss and Mississippi state, maybe the most entertaining series, oh, not yeah. necessarily the best played or whatever, but just like in terms of sheer entertainment value, probably the best series of the weekend. That, that's my take anyway. Ole Miss gets a series win that it absolutely had to, had to, had to, had to have. <laughs> like, I don't think yeah. that can be emphasized enough. Yeah. Uh, Mark, tell me what your thoughts on the series and, and what your takeaways were. Well, first off, it is the most heated series, heated rivalry series probably in the country. Uh, I don't think there's an equivalent. These programs do not like each other, and when they play, it is always interesting, right? Because the the fear of losing is way worse than the thrill of winning. Okay, so uh, Mississippi State came in playing pretty well. I, I do think that they are the better team, or but Ole Miss took the series this weekend, and honestly, I felt like the Saturday game. All, that, that Ole Miss came back and won, kind of beat Mississippi State twice. You know, that just the hangover from that game on Sunday, State just wasn't – that they, they weren't in it. Uh, they didn't seem to be ready to play and, and didn't respond, and, and Ole Miss took it with, to, to their credit. Um, very interesting on Saturday night. This is the second Saturday night in a row that Mississippi State catcher Johnny Long has been in the middle of a of a controversy. You you recall last last week, you know, he had the the hard knee tags on the catcher and caused, you know, the benches to empty and everybody came out. Well, this week he did something good. He hit a he had a really clutch home run in the 12th inning to give Mississippi State the lead. Then he carried the bat almost all the way to first base and then flipped it over his head, you know, like, I don't know, like it's showing how excited he was, we'll say. Um, yeah, that's what we'll say. Um, I think that, uh, and of course, Ole Miss coach Mike Bianco came out thinking, okay, well, isn't there a rule against this? And there is, by the way, in case you're wondering. And he got ejected for arguing that Long wasn't ejected. So it was it was, it was quite the moment. And that kind of rallied the, the Ole Miss fans who were left. It had been a long day in Oxford. They had the spring football game. They had a hot dog eating contest. They had a slam dunk contest. They had all these things going on. For football and then they came out and it was a 12 inning game and a lot of them had left by then but the ones that were still there um they were fired up but with their head coach getting ejected and when Ole Miss came out and and rallied and and won the game scoring two in the night or in the 12th um that that really empowered them to, to go on and take the series on Sunday. And they got a good pitching performance. Uh, I, I think Mason Nichols did a good job. And, and I, I do think that because they're, uh, they were able to get that win. Maybe, maybe that's, you know, rights the ship and they're able to, to do some things going forward. They've got Alabama this weekend. Alabama has struggled on the road. So that is a really interesting series you know, for, for the two of those teams, Ole Miss has to have wins. Alabama, well, uh, they, they just took a series from Arkansas, but they're 0-6 in SEC play. 
uh, on the road. So, um, so that, that, that's a fascinating one. So I do think that, um, for Mississippi state, still a really good team. I still think they're going to, they have all their goals still in front of them, despite the, the struggle this weekend. But, um, that, that hurts. We, you know, when you lose a tough game like that on Saturday, that ships the whole series and then you get kind of bludgeoned and run ruled on Sunday, it certainly leaves a bad taste in your mouth uh, for, for that program. With Super Bulldog weekend coming up next weekend, which will be, you know, enormous for them. They've got Auburn coming in who's, who's also struggling. So uh, if you're Mississippi State, you, you kind of, you got to flush it. You got to move on and, and seize the opportunity that's there because Auburn is a team that can't pitch to anyone right now. There's, <laughs> Kentucky just, just bludgeoned them all weekend. And Mississippi State is capable of doing that as well, especially uh, at home. So it's it, it was a an interesting series from a you know it's a rivalry, so you don't ever know what's going to happen. And Ole Miss they really needed it. I believe that was the first time they beaten Mississippi State in the series since 2015, which seems weird, but um, that's the quote. Um, and and I do think that th- this was. One time they, they certainly needed it more than others just to kind of kind of shift the direction of the two programs. You know, it's a real shame. You know, uh, listeners remember last week we talked about your recent automobile accident, Mark, and it's mm-hmm. a real shame that you uh, having not bought a new truck yet kept you from entering in the dunk contest as anticipated. Mm-hmm. In Oxford yeah, last week. it That's is right. Bummer. Yeah, I mean, I had the 360 planned. Um, yeah, you know, behind the back, between the legs. I mean, I already had it choreographed. Yeah, I mean, it, no, that's it was a shame. Be a thing of beauty. Yeah, maybe, maybe next, next year. year. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. It's good to good to keep goals. That's that's, that's definitely good. Yeah, it's it's a kind of series. Well, two things. One is that yes, that's right. Yeah, a little reverse dunk. I like that. Um, I uh, I I thought about this is before we got on that and I don't mean this as a joke, like th- this is not meant to be, it might be somewhat humorous, but I don't mean it as a joke. But when we talk about where Ole Miss now is, is in, you know, in a possible position to like, okay, can you start to make a run is they've won two more sec series than LSU. Yeah. Uh, you know, so like, and they're, they're not that far apart in the standings, but like the point is like, that's two, two decent series wins because it's also the series winning against South Carolina, which is, you know, yeah. come you know, a little above 500 in the league. Right. So anyway, like you certainly rather be old, you know, be in Ole Miss's position considering, okay, you're five and 10. You can look last year. I think Tennessee was five and 10. I think AM was five and 10 or worse. Uh, Auburn was <laughs> five or five and 10 or, yeah. you know, the, right. whether or not those were, they were exactly five and 10. They were in that neighborhood at this point. Right. Uh, and we saw where, where they ended up. So there is a little bit of a, a blueprint there. If you want to, if you want to be a, a true believer that, but the other thing I'll say is that, Outside of maybe Mason Nichols with his breakthrough pitching performance in the finale, I'm not sure I anything has changed for me about Ole Miss. You know, like again, like they may go on a run here, but I, I don't I don't coming out of come out of this series necessarily going, aha, they figured it out. Hmm. Um, you know, they had I don't they, they had that extra inning win that was super emotional and, and, you know, a big deal. And then they, they run ruled state today, which is, which is great, but you know, they still had some of the issues with defense, yeah. uh, catching defense in particular, um, <laughs> starting pitching for most of the weekend. Right. Yeah. So again, like you'll, you'll take the series win. That's not to take anything away from Ole Miss, but it, sometimes you get a series win where you, you, you kind of feel different about a team where you go, okay, this is a different look. This is something we haven't seen. This is a, a new gear. I don't necessarily feel that way, but again, like th- that doesn't matter <laughs> if they continue to win games. It doesn't matter how any of us feel about it, but th- that's kind of where I'm at with Ole Miss coming out of the, out of the weekend for, for better or worse. Yeah. I mean, their offense has been pretty solid all year. It's just, you know, where do they get the outs? You know, where's the run prevention come from? And um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's still kind of a work in progress, to be honest with you. Uh, Liam Doyle has its moments. You know, he gets a lot of strikeouts, but he doesn't go very, real deep in games. Nichols was good today. Um, you know, it's just been kind of one of those things where it's they're, they're trying to figure it out as you go. And, you know, that's all possible. You know, you can get better and 
and, and find guys as, as the year progresses, especially younger guys develop. I just, you know, at this point, I, I'm still kind of, so kind of wait and see on them. Can they get back in this in this hunt? But I do think that at, you know at this point you're heading into you know we're at the halfway point. Auburn and LSU are the two teams that are out of Hoover. You know at the halfway point. Uh, if you're Missouri and you're Ole Miss, you're feeling pretty good about it because those teams are kind of you know after the way things started a couple weeks ago, they were they were the teams we thought would be there. So maybe they can continue to move on and and make some progress. I mean, I really was impressed with Missouri and I don't I don't know where you're going next, but they they gave Georgia all they could handle um in Athens. That that was a really competitive series. Uh I mean Condon did Condon things and Georgia continued to hit home runs and 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 they pitched okay but not great. You know, I, I do think that Missouri has the pitching to give people problems. I just don't know about their offense. And, and I think that it, you know, all those young hitters or inexperienced hitters are uh, as they gain, um, you know, experience and, and at bats, uh, they should just get better. So it's a big series for Missouri. They've got LSU coming in, LSU scuffling that I think that's a fun one for me to just look at, you know, to, to see, you know, if LSU is going to get back in this thing, they've got to win that series. If, But if they don't, that means Missouri did really well, and they're probably in a position to make Hoover at that point. So um, for, for Carrick and, and, and that staff, that would be an enormous accomplishment if they could finish in the top 12 this year. Yeah, this is a good opportunity to, to kind of uh, meld together the conversation between those two mm-hmm. series because um, – I mean, I've talked a lot about LSU's too talented not to have a run in them. Yeah. We knew the first 15 were going to be really tough, but we didn't think it was going to be three and 12 tough. Right. So they're at least a couple games back from what they thought, from what we thought they'd be at this point. At least. And then, yeah. right. And and it's not meant as disrespect to, LSU, to uh, Mizzou specifically, but like LSU has to be looking at that series and the one against Auburn coming up and saying like, we need to go five and one in those six yeah. games. Absolutely. And that's just going to be because totally think about the math. They're sitting at a three and 12. Even if they go four and two, that's seven and 14, which is better. But, you know, Ole Miss two years ago was seven and 14 famously. But do you, that, that but that tells you how yeah, much but, of a tightrope walk it yeah, was. And, and you're really at the edge of getting yes. to the tournament or not. Right. right. But then on the, on the Georgia side, my, my last thought on that series is that it just, if, if George is going to be serious about being a postseason team and the jury's still out on that, like that's a series you have to have. Yeah. Um, and so good to see them kind of show their medal <laughs> and pull that out. Charlie Khan did another uh, big series. And and for those interested, Mark will have a, uh, an opus on uh, Char- Charlie Condon coming, coming this week. So look, look to that. Um, I'm sure it's going to, I have not seen it yet, but I, I'm sure it's going to be a must. I'm excited read, so. about it. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it kind of goes into, you know, how he was, you know, he was a walk-on at Georgia. So how did that happen? How does a guy this talented end up a walk-on? And then he redshirts his first year. So how does that go? And who agrees to redshirt just because you're thin, right? And Charlie Condon did that. And and then how he became the player that he is, you know, last year and then progressed again to this year so I'm, I'm really excited about it i think um i, I think people are going to really get a kick out of just seeing what kind of player and also what kind of person th- this guy is because he's he's unique and certainly you know he's hit 24 home runs already and he's hitting you know 480 something uh, and he's he's at the top of his game from a college baseball standpoint but he's also seems to be, you know, at the top of this game from a, you know, a character standpoint. And, and that's, you know, in, in this game, and Joe, you can relate to this. You love to, to cheer for the good guys, right? The, the guys that, that make you feel, you know, feel good about, you know, them as a human. And uh, Charlie Condon is certainly a great example of that. 
Indeed. Absolutely. Yeah. That was my experience at the times I've gotten to chat with him. So yeah, looking, looking forward to that, that piece later this week, uh, listeners, you, you should as well. If so, if you're not subscribed to SEC extra, uh, do it for that. If nothing else, <laughs> you know, to, to be able to, to read that when it lands, uh, back on Tennessee and LSU quickly, interesting thing that the Tennessee has started to do on the mound just because of the uncertainty, right? The AJ Russell injury, mm-hmm. AJ Causey out of the rotation. There's been other injuries along the way. Uh, they're doing a little piggybacking. So AJ Causey comes out of the bullpen this weekend instead of starting the game. That goes well. Mm-hmm. Nate Sneed obviously is also doing a decent bit of piggybacking. And then when you combine that with, I think, I don't know, if you injected the the, pit, the, the coaching staff with truth serum, I think they'd say that Xander Seacrest has actually been better in that role than they would have imagined. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, two of his three starts have been really, really good. So I think that's gone pretty well. So this is not, necessarily the pitching staff that we expected for Tennessee outside of Drew Beam being obviously the centerpiece of it. But it just goes to show again that, you know, Frank Anderson's one of the best in the business just because he's taken the, the puzzle pieces and it, it's not, you know, they've had Dolander burns and beam for two years. And so this is a very different deal and, and they're figuring it out, which I think is impressive. And with their offense, it's not like, like you and I might be able to get some wins. <laughs> like with that offense, you know, behind us. So we might, that's a might is the, is the, is the operative word there. But uh, regardless, just impressive stuff for Tennessee to be able to adjust on the fly on the pitching staff. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, beam is just so competitive out there. And even though, you know, I think he gave up eight hits in game two and give up like one unearned run. He just, he makes the pitches when he needs to. And then, I, you know, I love the way that Causey responded because he hasn't been great the last couple of weeks as a starter. They change his role and come in. And he's basically a long relief and comes in and just shoves, you know, and that's, that, that's another, obviously, advantage for them, you know, if they're able to get that. And I love your point about Xander Seacrest. He's been um, way better than expected. You know, he's he was the veteran guy who was really good in midweek. And now they're throwing him on Sundays and he's 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 a good Sunday guy right now. Uh, you look around the look around the conference. Who's got a better Sunday guy? Not not many. I mean, maybe Florida, um, maybe Kentucky. Um, but after that, Arkansas, after that, he's he's in the discussion. So uh, I do think that. Uh, you know, with their offense, Blake Burke is having a tremendous year. I think he leads the SEC in batting in the SEC games. Um, just, you know, and Christian Moore had a huge day today. He hit two home runs. So that that's – I mean, we've talked about it ad nauseum. I don't have to go into it again. But that that's the best lineup. I mean, they and Texas A&M are the best two lineups, I think, in the country, certainly in the conference. And um, – it's a pity those two teams don't play each other. That would be uh, that would be worth a trip. Um, but but I do think that uh, Tennessee is in great position to continue to play. I, I love the matchup at Kentucky next weekend. Kentucky's playing so well. They're just such a hard nosed, you know, energetic uh, team that that just takes the fight out of out of their out of their opponents. And oh boy, here comes Tennessee, and there, and Tennessee's a really good team, really talented, probably more talented than Kentucky. I think if if you matched, you know, player for player, but Kentucky's playing so well, and especially at home, that that to me is that that's one of the best series of of the of the whole season, and that's coming up next week. That is a good segue uh, to, to to Kentucky's sweep of Auburn. And as you alluded to, big series coming up for Kentucky against Tennessee. Uh, not to brag, but I will be there. Um, which, r- real quick, Mark, do you have any – I have tickets to Keeneland on Friday. Mm. Um, do you have any tips on betting the ponies? Um, Other than maybe don't. Maybe um... – I don't know. I, I, I've heard that if you, you watch the warmups and you see which one um, relieves himself, that's the one you bet on because he'll he'll be ready to go. A couple pounds lighter. Is that what yeah. you're insinuating? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've been watching. I, look, not I'm, I'm I always say I'm not a not a betting man. I, I'm not a gambling man. 
Uh, but you know, you kind of it's a little bit of a win in Rome thing, right? Go to yeah, Kingland right. and and check that out. It's, it's all um, about the experience. Yeah, yeah, so I'll put a few bucks down, but but I've been I've been intensely watching videos on like all the different kinds of bets you can make and it, like what all the numbers mean on the on the program. So I, we're going to see what happens. I'll document yeah. it for social media. I'm certain. I love it. Go for it. Um, so yeah, Kentucky with the sweep. Oh, and I meant to say, like one of the the storylines here is that with the sweep over Auburn, Kentucky moves to 14 and one. If they sweep Tennessee this coming weekend, which we can agree that that's like unlikely, but Hey, you know, you know, right. home series, you never know. Uh, that would move Kentucky to 17 and one, which was the record in the 18 games. The 2022 Kentucky team had through 18 games, mm. 17 and one. Oh. So it's all, it's, it's all uh, coming together, Mark. Um, but I, so my takeaway, cause you mentioned Kentucky has like kind of just this energy about them. I've said this a couple times the last couple weeks, but, I firmly believe that Kentucky thinks they're the best team in the country. Yeah. Like it. And I like they believe. Uh, yeah. I agree. Like, and I, whether or not they're right is a whole nother deal. I, I would say probably not, but like I'm at the point now where it's like, well, who's going to tell them no, yeah. <laughs> because like every piece of evidence we have is that like, I maybe like at this well, point, I'll they're two what. games ahead of anybody else in the, in the yeah. standings. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, they're going to finish with, you know, uh, Tennessee, Arkansas, Florida, South Carolina, Vanderbilt. I don't know what the order is, but they're going to play all five of those teams. So that will tell us <laughs> a whole lot about Kentucky. And, and at this point, I'm not betting against them. I mean, that, that's a team that is playing so well. They're, they're so confident. They're so um, – they, they just force the issue and make teams adjust to them. And it's so rare in today's sport where you can, you know, convey your, you know, your playing style on someone else. And that's what they've been able to do. Now, whether they continue it as the competition rises, I mean, that that's the fun part of this, right? They're, they're certainly going to give it a shot. So um, following Kentucky down the stretch, I, I think it's the most interesting part of, of the SEC season. I mean, you, you've got that at the top. And then you've got all these teams at the bottom, you know, the Auburns, the LSUs, the Ole Misses that are trying to kind of get back into things uh, and, and try to make their way. I think there, there's a race at the top and there's a race at the bottom, and they're they're interesting for different reasons. And uh, and I do think that that's what makes these last five weeks just so much fun because honestly, you got an Auburn team that's what to what they won what two games one game whatever it is they won two games so and they led kentucky seven to nothing in the fifth inning uh sunday and blew it right because they just don't have enough pitching but they they've got plenty of offense so on days where they're where they pitch better they're going to give somebody a whole lot of headaches right And, and i do think that um because of that that's what makes you know, this gauntlet that, that we're, that we always refer to. So interesting because anyone can beat anybody. And, and I do think that um, even though that, you know, the top team Kentucky beat the bottom team Auburn this weekend and swept them. Um, if they played again, who knows? I mean, Auburn might win the series. I mean, it's just that, just that weird in, in, in how, how these teams are, are well matched, so to speak. A couple interesting things on Kentucky one and, and people who've been watching the video, the weekend waypoints videos have heard me mention it, but the, the stats have not updated yet with today's results, but going into today's games, Kentucky was second in the conference and home runs in sec play, which is not something that any of us would have imagined. Yeah. So I've been telling people like, look, they, this team can still run. They can still bunt, but like, they don't yeah. have to like last year. It was yeah. kind of a have to. And this year you brought it's, that up. Yeah. Cause I mean, Ron Nicholson has nine home runs in SEC games. I mean, that's I mean yeah, that's in really London yeah. Cags territory. I mean, he's been he's been up there, and and this is a this is a Kentucky team that yeah they'll they'll bunt yeah they'll they'll hit and run, but they'll also hit the ball in the gap and they'll also hit home runs and they'll just do whatever they have to to win and and, and I do think that that's a, a mark of a good team because there are teams around this conference 
that they have to hit the home run to win. And if you look, those are the teams that are kind of, you know, playing below expectations right now, where the the teams that that can do multiple things are are having a lot more success. And Kentucky's a great example of that. My last thing here too is is think about this: Kentucky last year was the 12 seed in the top 16 and, and they went, was it 16 and 14 in conference last year? Does that sound right? Yeah. 16 and 14. Yeah. So the great RPI, right? Yeah. yeah. And so I don't think their RPI is, I guess I have it pulled up here. I can look, well, their RPI is four as we sit here and talk. So scratch that their RPI is in Good. the same range of, of what it was last year. Um, so 14 wins RPI like that. Like I, I don't want to overstate it, but it, it just almost feels like at this point, especially when you consider the series against Arkansas yeah. and the series against Tennessee are at home where, where you would expect them to not get swept at this point. It, it, it does almost seem like, you know, Kentucky would have to really stumble down the stretch to not be a top eight this year. Agreed, now, it, depend, it depends on what other folks do. Like I get it. Like it's not a, it's not just a, a vacuum, but mm-hmm. um, like, it really does seem like that's that kind of trajectory they're on when you consider their, they're what four wins away in conference from being right, you know, yeah. in that conversation. So yeah, just, it's all right there for them. Yeah. I mean, we're going to do the nerd cast later this week and you will hear me um, go to the mats for Kentucky as, <laughs> as one of the top teams in the country. And, and one of those that, that should be a, certainly a top eight and one of the top, top eight at that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't even, it's the kind of thing. I don't even know if you'll have much, you probably won't have to fight that hard. Cause it's like, what, yeah. what is the argument against if you're building the field today? Right. Yeah. Like it's hard yeah. to make an argument against unless you just think they're going to get absolutely clobbered the second half of conference play, which it's hard to imagine that given how well they they're playing, but they're anyway. going to have to get absolutely clobbered because they've already got 14 wins. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. They're going to have to get swept hard. multiple times. Right. Correct. Yeah. Um, okay. Speaking of teams at the top of kind of the, uh, the, the, the pol- well, the rankings, the mm-hmm. top of the, the field of 64, all that stuff, A&M, Sweeping yeah. Vanderbilt and not just sweeping them, but like literally Mash like them. erasing Vanderbilt off the map yeah. <laughs> this weekend. And I'm actually going to start with the Vanderbilt piece of this because we talked a little a and earlier. It's the second time this season where Vanderbilt's just gotten kind of run off the field on the road. The other was against South Carolina, which is not the same caliber of team as A&M. So I, so you don't love that because it's one thing to lose road series it's another to get swept and it's another to get swept and not be competitive. And that's happened to Vanderbilt twice now. Mm-hmm. Um, so a couple things here that I just kind of don't like about trends and with Vanderbilt and shout out to Aria Gerson of the Tennessee. And she does a really good job kind of breaking stuff down at the end of every weekend. Two things that are problematic for me from Vanderbilt that she pointed out. One is something they can't really control, but I think does explain some of what's happening here is even though they don't make a ton of errors, Mm-hmm. their errors disproportionately lead to runs. So they've given up, I think the most or next to most unearned runs in the conference this year, hmm. but they're not among the leaders in errors. So when they do get runners on base via error, they yeah. score. And again, like, I don't know that you can really control that. Like that just kind of seems like a luck thing, but it does suggest that like, they're getting scored on a, a little more than you might otherwise think. The other yeah. part, which is something they theoretically can control, is that this team doesn't walk. And, you know, something like 11th and on base percentage and, and maybe last in walks or, or something like that. Go to Aria's Twitter account. She's got all there. But the point is, if you're a team like Vanderbilt where, you know, you, you want to get on base, you want to move runners, you want to stack big innings together by getting six, seven guys on base in an inning. Mm-hmm. You, the walk has to be a part of that, you yeah. know, because otherwise you're just looking for four singles in an inning and that's, right. you know, that that's hard to do. It's tough. So, right. yeah. So it, it just does feel a little bit like Vanderbilt. Like we know what we love about them, right? They're the raw pitching talent, but there are just some other things kind of holding them up that I think have contributed to having these two weekends where they just don't look like they belong with some of the better teams in the league. Yeah. Uh, the concern for me is, if they don't pitch well, they they just don't have a shot. I mean, they're they're just not going to be able to to match you run for run and win the thirteen to twelve kind of game. 
and you don't want to play those, but you know, you're going to find yourself in those from time to time. And in, they just, they are ill-equipped to do that for, for the reasons you mentioned there. They don't hit a lot of home runs and they don't draw a lot of walks and they don't have a lot of crooked numbers. And that's, that's a problem. If you're going to play the, the A&Ms and Tennessees and, and teams that, that are going to put up big numbers or potentially. So they've got to pitch well and they didn't pitch well this weekend. And on top of that, they got shut out the first two games. I think it was what, 24 to nothing in the first two games. And they score six on Sunday and still give up 12. So it's, it's just, you know, it was, you know, maybe it's one of those weekends you just flush and you move on and see what happens. Um, but, but it does give you concern. They are not the only team to struggle on the road. I mean, as we, as we've demonstrated all year, it's, it's home teams have done really well this year. Um, you know, unless you're playing Kentucky, Kentucky seems to have the anecdote, but everyone else has struggled on the road. And um, so, you know, if you're Vandy, you play pretty well at home. So you, you get back home and you take care of business and then you get ready and try to true up some things and, and get some guys in place to, to make a postseason run because they're, they're certainly capable of that. There's plenty of talent. And if they pitch well, uh, they can beat anybody. So that's, you know, it's kind of like what we talked about with Arkansas, right? If they pitch well, they're going to be a handful. And Vandy's got that kind of staff, you know, at a at a ceiling level that they shut out anyone. So I, I do think that that's that's that makes them an interesting team to 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 evaluate. But then you look at A and M, and boy, they're just bludgeoning people, and. You know, Prager pitched really well on Friday. They got, you know, Jones was was really good on Saturday, and and even though Lampkin wasn't as good as he could be on on Sunday, their offense is so good that he he doesn't have to be. So, I mean, I, you know, I really like Arkansas's team, but at this point, A and M is making making a run, man. That they may be the most balanced that because they've got such a good offense and. They play good defense, and their pitching, while it's not Arkansas, is good enough, and at its ceiling is really good because um, all three of those starters have, have proven to, to have shut out stuff when they're on, and then they got Hessian back at the end of the game. Um, it's uh, th- They're going to be a problem for somebody. I mean, I really don't know uh, if they're not the best team in the country right now. And, you know, I know you guys will go through your – your, your rankings, you know, tonight, tomorrow, whenever, and and A and M's going to get strong consideration for the top spot, and I'm I'm right there with you. Uh, I think right now with, with what Arkansas struggled this weekend, and A and M's got to go to the exact same venue, and we'll see what they do uh, at Alabama. But um, I do think that A and M right now is the number one team. I, I think that's. I mean we haven't met yet, but I, I do think that's probably where we land. Um, mm-hmm. especially with the, you know, Clemson series loss too. So I just, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, just A&M has nothing left to prove at this point, yeah. you know, like they, they've just answered every question. You're right that they have really good balance. So yeah, really no, no notes really ever since that series lost to Florida, they've been in, in really good shape. And it's kind of a shame that, you know, it'll still be a fun series, but, but A&M and Arkansas don't play until the weekend before Hoover. Mm-hmm. And by that point, unless something drastically it's changes. Gonna really probably, matter. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be yeah. two of the top four, like, you right. know, like, and they're both going to be kind of not distracted, but you know, they're just going to have bigger fish to fry down the road. Right. You know, like they'll probably already have locked up top eights and whatever else. And so, you know, it's just, right. it's just not going to have as much juice as it would have if they were playing now roughly. So mm-hmm. that is yeah. kind of a bummer, but that's, that's a nitpick, but. Regardless, a and uh, A&M equals good right now. That's my, to put a fine point on it. Last series that we'll cover, Mark, South Carolina and Florida. I mean, good on South Carolina. It's a road series win. Like that kind of changes the math a little bit for them yeah. as they look to, I mean, get back into a hosting type discussion moving forward. But for Florida, man, it just another kind of listless weekend. I mean, kudos for getting the win Sunday and salvaging a game. but 
like some of the stuff that has been an issue like continues to crop up and it you know i think we're we're obviously well well beyond this point now but for anybody who was maybe holding out some hope i i do think we have to just maybe recalibrate what we think of of florida this season given given that we're now you know roughly 35 games into the regular season and, and 15 into the sec portion yeah florida just did pitch well i mean didn't pitch well yeah. they didn't pitch well for a while now and they hoped that uh, Pierce Coppola, who came back and started on Saturday, <laughs> it's kind of a weird deal. He's been kind of this this phantom guy who's been around the program, who started opening weekend in 2022 and hasn't pitched all of that year, the rest of that year, and all of last year. And now midseason of this year, he's finally back and gives you a couple of innings. And he, he wasn't great, but he wasn't terrible. He kind of showed some some glimpses at times that maybe he can develop and give them, you know, another option, we'll call it. Uh, but they're just, I mean, they're, they're struggling to get outs. They're struggling to miss bats. And then offensively, it's home run or nothing. I mean, that that's that's kind of their, their deal. And, you know, Cags is on a – he's on a heater. <laughs> he's homered six straight games, eight of the last nine. I mean that's that's pretty strong. Uh, he just needs some help, and and I do think that you know they've got some really good hitters who are hitting around 250 that are way better than that, and and that's got to obviously um, change if they're going to turn the season around and make a run because it's a talented team. They're not a team you would want to face in the postseason because they're so talented. What if they figure it out? but they're just not pitching well enough right now. And then you look at South Carolina, who um, offensively, they can swing it, right? A lot of home runs, a lot of walks. They, they make pitchers work. They're, it's, it's a strong offense. And the question for me, for them, is how well they're going to pitch. And especially, you know, bullpen late in games, are, are they able to they have a lead? Can they hold it? And I, I do think that, they were able to do that a couple times this weekend and, you know, they were in the game Sunday. So, that, you know, they, they had a chance there. Um, it's a team that uh, got a road series win, which, you know, it's, it's hard to come behind this league, which is going to help them down the stretch. And if they continue to do that, I mean, they've got uh, obviously, you know, tough series. Uh, you got Arkansas coming up, you got, you know, Kentucky and you got, Tennessee, and you got, you got a lot of good teams left to play. But I, I do think that that's a team that if they can, you know, they can just kind of tread water and get to the postseason in a good spot, uh, maybe in that host area, um, you know, either a, a low host or a top two seed. I mean, there, there's certainly enough talent there that they can make a run and, and make it to Omaha. So it's it's a good club, and, and I do think that's that's important. For them, you know, they had a good season last year and they've kind of been on that roller coaster where they're good one year and then they step back and then they're good and then they step back. And at this point, they look like they're going to be good two years in a row. And and I think that's that's really that's really big for Mark and that program. Yeah, with Florida, it, it, it feels like they could follow the Tennessee path from last year, which is that they end up on the two line. But they're like mm-hmm. the two that nobody wants to one of the twos that nobody wants to see. Um, you know, like much like last year when Tennessee ends up on the two line, uh, for poor Clemson <laughs> and, and it's like, well, great now, you know, they have to deal with two of the best starters in the country and Dolander and beam and then burns in the bullpen and, and, and whatever else, yeah. you know, imagine seeing a two seed, you know, perhaps, I mean, at, in Tallahassee, like, <laughs> you know, and yeah. you end up with now, of course, FSU has owned that series this year, but it's a different deal in the postseason, but and it's like weekend still, starters versus midweek, right? Right, and, and you know, and even still, even if FSU has won, has swept that series, that still you don't want to see them, right? Because it's like no. well, now we got to pitch to Cags, and you know they've got all these talented. They they, they just run out one guy throwing ninety five after another, and and mm-hmm. yeah, just a just a nightmare potential two seed. But but yeah, good good on South Carolina. Felt like much like with Alabama. Now South Carolina is on a, a different level right now, but kind of got them back on track and mm-hmm. and, and got again change the math of you win a road series. It makes you feel like, okay, you, you stole one and that's not to take anything away from the win. I just mean in terms of the, 
the math to get to whatever number you're trying to trying to get to. So big stuff there for the Gamecocks. Uh, Mark, that feels like an episode <laughs> recapping, uh, recapping week nine, another event for the week. weekend. Yeah. The, what, uh, what do we get? Uh, three sweeps, four sweeps. Let's see. Tennessee over LSU, Kentucky over Auburn, a and over Vanderbilt, just three sweeps. Yeah. Three sweeps, three sweeps. And, and four, four, two to one. Um, looking forward to this coming weekend. Obviously I'll be, I'll be in Lexington for, maybe the biggest regular season series in Lexington. Yeah. Maybe there was something in that oh, wow. 2018 yeah. season when they, I think they were number one briefly in 2018 um, before things kind of fell apart. So maybe there was something then, but uh, I'll, I'll have to ask around. Maybe I'll ask some Kentucky folks if there's been a bigger regular season. Uh, it would, it would almost have to be that season if, if there has been a bigger regular season series. So that'll, I'll ask around. That might be interesting to find out. So, um, all right, Mark, uh, that is it for this episode. Um, for this episode of Howie to Hoover, I should say. Uh, thank you to Pitch Logic for sponsoring this and every episode of Howie to Hoover. Uh, thank you, Mark, for joining me as always. Thank you, the listener, for listening and for giving us all of your reviews, ratings, and, and what have you on uh, Apple Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all of the various podcast podcast apps. We appreciate you guys, Mark. I'm stumbling to the exit right now. I'm, I'm tripping over my words. I'm I'm flailing as I as I head out the door. So I'm going to end it now. Thank you, everyone, for listening. 